the attention of the sports world once again had turned to the finals of the NCAA basketball tournament and to the four teams that would battle for the national championship. As expected, the amazing UCLA Bruins had earned the right to compete for the national crown, and the Bruins entered the 1973 finals with some awesome credentials. Riding the longest winning streak in college basketball history, Coach John Wooden's UCLA team had won an unbelievable 73 straight games and were looking for their seventh consecutive national championship, their ninth in the last 10 years. Standing in the way of the Bruins were three teams that really hadn't been expected to reach the semifinals. But the Friars of Providence College, the Indiana Hoosiers, and the Memphis State Tigers all came to the semifinals in St. Louis hoping that they held the key to ending UCLA's domination of college basketball. And along with basketball fans throughout the country, many of the people who jammed into the 19,000-seat St. Louis arena came wondering if this was to be the year that the UCLA dynasty would end. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Fleming, here to bring you the exciting story of college basketball's biggest spectacle, the NCAA Finals, along with the 1973 All-America team, as selected by the Basketball Writers Association of America. Brought to you by Chevrolet, building a better way to see the USA. scoring guard Ernie DiGregorio, Providence entered its semifinal game against Memphis State, standing 27 and 2 on the season. The freewheeling DiGregorio had almost single-handedly taken his team to victories in the Eastern Region over Pennsylvania and Maryland. And against the Tigers, the six-foot guard immediately took charge, scoring the Friars' first field goal and passing for another in the first minute of play. It was only natural that a number of people in the St. Louis crowd couldn't quite believe what they were seeing, as DiGregorio constantly befuddled the Tiger defense with his court sleight of hand. <laughs> Meanwhile, Memphis State's two big men, number 35 Larry Keenan and number 33 Ronnie Robinson, gave the Tigers enough scoring punch to keep them within reach. But the Friars had their own stellar big man in six foot eight center Marvin Barnes who battled the Memphis front line underneath while hitting four out of his first five shots. With Barnes hitting from the inside and DiGregorio scoring from all over the court, Providence appeared headed into the finals. But Fortune wasn't smiling on the front. With 12 and a half minutes left to go in the first half, a fall under the basket sent Barnes to the bench with a sprained knee. Providence coach Dave Gavitt called timeout. I want you to anticipate now the possibility of going to the four defense. All right, if we go to the four defense, you're going to play cook man to man. You're going to play bench man to man. All right? All right? Yeah. You still be on the point. You guys are going to be in the triangle zone. You're still going to have the point. So you don't play anybody high. So you'll be dropped back. While right Providence back tried to up. improvise an offense and a defense that could work four. without the big man, Coach Gene Bartow of Memphis State was telling his players how to take advantage of the break. We need to be jamming in. Barnes is out of the game. We ought to be able to get right around the back. They're right playing right behind your big players right behind him. We can go to these two men right in around the basket. We won't do it. We've got to do it. It can be done. You move it a little patience. We're in this game. We're right in it. Don't let them get that spread anymore. Keep playing. Move it quick. Be ready to jam. That's all the work. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We've been down a lot of times before. They're in a zone, which I think they'll stay in number four. Now jam it in there. Get that good shot, and we're all right. Everybody, you can't be able to today. All right. Go, go. Memphis narrowed the gap when play resumed. Unchecked by Barnes in the middle, Robinson and Keenan combined to score six points 
that brought the Tigers to within three. But the first half still belonged to Ernie DiGregorio and the Friars. came out for the second half. And facing a team that had lost its big center, the Tigers sank three straight while Providence went scoreless. And Providence coach Gavitt called timeout again. Memphis cut the lead to one before DiGregorio was able to regain the touch and put his team ahead by three again. Then for the next nine minutes, the two teams battled evenly. But Providence, which had shot for more than 56% in the first half, began to taper off, and the Memphis front line took control of the boards while Marvin Barnes sat on the sideline. Barnes did manage to get back into the game, but he was hobbling and rather ineffective. Memphis State, meanwhile, took complete charge of the game and outscored Providence 13 to 1 in those final minutes to win going away and to advance to the championship game. <laughs> 